Okay, this is the 29th day of April, and Mom wants to sit down here on the bench. Okay, I'll sit down so here. Then we can have your, uh, your yeah. memoirs. You want your baby? Yeah. Might as well take your baby. 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 Okay, here we are. Uh, Mom, tell us a little bit about the first things that you remember. Uh, you know, when just right after yes. you were born? Or... Well, I was three years old when I first remember. I lived on the Hollenbeck farm. Hollenbeck, was that in the higher? Yes, it was the East Middlefield. And the first thing that I remember is watching school children play. School house was right across the road. And I remember some of of the house inside the kitchen table, some few things like that. Then I remember about the time I broke my mother's seven eggs. You know, she had them up on the second floor and broke the, broke the wood shed. It was a pretty big shed and there were steps going up. And I can always, almost see those steps yet. She took me along up there with her seven hands, told me there were biddies coming out of the eggs, which that was one thing you shouldn't have done. Then I went up alone and our hen was off her nest, and so I took two or three eggs and I threw them down the steps. And I remember the half developed chicks and out on the step. Uh -huh. And then I went on down, and my father was just outside the door and shed there chopping kitchen wood. And before I knew what was happening, he had me in, up in his um, arms and he really gave me a hop in this thing. Maybe a lick. How old sure were you then, did. about three? Three, three years. Uh -huh. Yes, I think I was three when we moved away from that place. And it was during that place we went to Indiana, you know. I took a trip to Indiana with my mother and Aunt Eva. I remember the train ride out and we were, we had our seats turned toward each other. And I asked my mother about it, she said, yeah, that's the way it was, you know. Uh-huh. Seats turned toward each other and we had sandwich. I don't remember how to be ate, but it was really, you know, I thought it was really the world to us. Was it know? a train with smoke going? Oh, yeah, it's one of those old time trains. So we went out to Michigan. Did I say Indiana? It was Michigan where my grandparents lived. And I remember the old, the old farmhouse. It was unpainted. It was just old black, you know, it was rain washed. Uh -huh. And then the blacks saw us around the house to keep the cold wind from coming in. You know, kind of slabs around it to hold it to the, to, to the house. I remember that. I remember my young uncles, you know, grand, my mother's young brothers there. And they were, wanted to hold me and they were doing a lot of tricks for us. I Is that right? Yeah, I remember that. I remember them. Because there were, you know, quite a few at home. Mm -hmm. And my mother said they held me one day and I just got on the I'm um, there laughing, and finally I said, well, she's not going on Cape, and even I don't wipe down. <laughs> and she's me, I can kind of remember that. They all laughed at me. You've helped me enough. Huh? Yeah, I helped me enough. <laughs> and uh, I don't remember the home, tr home trip. I forgot that. Mm -hmm. That was before my Aunt Eva was married, you know, and before Molly, because we had a coal burning stove. So when children were disobedient, why, I can remember that they had to sit in the coal bucket. And I'm not sure if I didn't do it myself. One time or so, I had to sit in the coal bucket. I was only the first grade there, though. So. And in Ohio, with snow on the ground, almost through the school year, it seemed. Because once it started to snow, it had snow till spring. And uh, in the afternoon, we were soon out. So I would go home to the snow at times. And there was a boy there with a sled that had pulled me. I remember that, I can't remember who it is, but I remember that a boy with a sled had pulled me through the snow at least part ways home. He was also there where the wagon rolled over me, its wheels. I was always trying to do some kind of trick or, or prove me what I could do. I told you about this before? No. Then on the way home from school, I was walking with the whole group, you know, my brothers and sisters with me. And a wagon came along with two men sitting on it, you know, and had just a tongue through it, you know, and I go, in the middle, it didn't have no body on it. Uh -huh. So I said to the others, I can run in there and back without the wheel catching me. <laughs> but that didn't happen. You know, wheel, back wheel caught me and broke, went right over me. Is that right? But it had enough snow on the ground that I guess it just pressed me down in the snow and I didn't get hurt. Mm -hmm. And I've often thought of this as the many tragedies that I escaped unhurt, and I thought, well, I guess God wanted me to grow up, but he didn't, you know, because I could have easily died with any of those things. Mm -hmm. well, <clears throat> you uh, had a girlfriend in school, didn't you? So, uh, one that you were went around with quite a bit. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's when I fell down the hay chute. The hay chute? Yes, uh, that was on the next farm then. Right, the, the farm I lived when I started school. Yes, her mother came there, over there, so both mothers, my mother and her mother, and 
us two went up into the hayloft. And they were looking for eggs, you know, the chickens. Was there, and I started running from one hay wall to the other. You know, it was two walls. We run, you know, eyes closed, and bang against it. And we just been laughing, you know. And I ran over too far, and down I went on the cement to the hay chute. It was left open. Uh, and I remember that real well because I was really bewildered, you know. And before I knew it, they were all standing around me. But I can't remember being hurt. And there was only a little scatter of hay. I can remember that too, a little scatter of hay there. Hmm. And on the same place where the horse kicked me. Uh huh. Yes, and we were standing out the barn. I can almost see us, uh, Adam and Jake that and me, and the others standing out there by the barn. And the horse was feeding in the in the lot, or between house, house and barn. Uh -huh. So uh, that horse was very tame. My mother was always proud about the horse being so tame that she could be easy and uh, use it on the buggy. So I said, look, I'm not afraid of that horse. It's so tame. <laughs> so I was just a little tight. So I ran out there to show them and put my fingers, and they must have been awfully pointing you know, against its belly. And it's uh -huh. probably tickled it. And it was this foot, you know, and just grabbed me and just, oh, I rolled. Yeah, we moved to Delaware in October of 1923. We filled our boxcar at Burton Station, about a, mi a mile from us across the woods. And we had all our furniture in there and, and lot, some barn stuff too, I guess. And the horses, two horses, and our big shepherd dog. And we, the boys, Adam, who was about 15, and my Uncle Dan, already in his 30s, uh, he got into the boxcar to come along to Delaware and take care of the animals and to milk the cow and strain the milk and through a towel. I remember that. And they used some of the milk. And we came ahead of them. We were all smoked out because of the, uh, the old uh, time motors, uh, locomotive. And the next day after we came down, we came to Uncle Wells. The next day they came and they were two of yours as black as soot from the smoke. Oh, yes, I forgot that story of in Pittsburgh. When yeah. they went out to when they went out to walk in the Pittsburgh, I think it was, some cops uh, trailed them and because uh, they thought they, there was there were a couple that had eloped or run off, and they were trying to track it down. But they found out it wasn't the couple they were looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, when our car came, everybody went out with wagon stuff and brought the stuff in, moved it into a place, uh, a little a little house we had rented for about three months until we could move into the house that the farm we had rented them. So we had rented the farm, so we moved into the little house for three months until uh -huh. the first of the year. It's October and December. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one bad thing, I had to quit going to school. Yeah. And I asked my mother about going to school, she said nothing to do, and said we came out here to miss schools. <laughs> to miss the school? Well, so, like... we did, so we didn't have to go to town school. Oh, uh -huh. And I would have had to go to Dover to go to school, and I couldn't go to school. That was a drop for me. That was one reason that I always thought the children go to school. You know? Kind of did a little bit for me. Oh, how talk. how late? To how what grade did you go to in school then? Well, just through the seventh, I started in the eighth grade. Then we moved to Delaware. I couldn't finish. I see. So you never went to school in Delaware? No, I never went to school in Delaware. It was a drop. It was sort of a sinking feeling. I didn't know why, but what it was because I couldn't. I knew I didn't have enough education. Mm -hmm. The more I re uh, when I stopped, the more I realized it. And uh, we liked it in Delaware. And Uncle Wilson and us we were together all the time. Emma Miller's came and Eli's, mm -hmm. just a small group of us together. Then uh, Dan Mass came, about two years after we were here, Dan Mass came. Uh -huh. And they lived here a year, or maybe two years, before Dad and I started to go together. You know. We started in the spring of the year and then got married the next January, mm -hmm. almost a year. And uh, but what was the next thing? Yeah, yeah, we got married in Dover, of course. You and Dad did. How yeah, long did you go together? I uh, remember. I said almost a year, not quite a about year. About a year, uh-huh. Yeah, so, uh -huh. It was cold weather we went down there. Mm -hmm. And we stayed with Dan Mass, you know, his folks, you know, until we soon had located a... You and Dad were married, then you moved to the farm. Was this Webb's farm? At the first place was the Becker place. We lived there when Lawrence was born, you know. Uh -huh. And then by the next, uh, by winter, he was only about four months old, and then we moved to the Webb farm, and Dad worked for Webb. And there we lived nine years. We were gone one year, and then back again. How many children were born uh, on five, the web? Five? That little red house here by the woods. You uh -huh. weren't born there. You were born up on the web, other web farm. You know. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, as far as... Now, uh, Dad worked for web. How much did he work for? Well, for a dollar a day, but for quite a long time, I think it was a dollar and a quarter a day. But it still come to about 
seven dollars, something like that. You know, I think it was seven dollars a week. Seven dollars a week, and he and, and he supported five children on that. Yeah, but we weren't hard up. We didn't think so. I didn't. How, think. how could you live on that little money? Well, we had some chickens and had enough eggs to get the groceries, you know. And clothes didn't cost much then. I made all the clothes anyhow, you know. Oh, is that right? And we got some stuff from our uh, my folks that were tending the market, you know, what they had left over. And, and we had a nice garden there. We never even thought of that being so awfully hard up. We were used to being money was, you know, something precious, but uh, no money, no, not much money laying around. <laughs> Well, a lot uh, of uh, exciting things happened. Yeah, those like years, what? Those what exciting? Years there. What about the barn burning down? Well, that was a place you were born. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, what happened when I was born? Anything particular what was going on? Was it raining, thundering? Well, I guess you were squalling like they all do when you were born. No, it was a nice day, July. You know, nice day. Dad had his tomatoes out and had put, put fertilizer on, and he didn't want to take time off to have a baby. You know? I was yeah. out of his mind and you know, on the tomatoes uh, covered, I mean the fertilizer covered. And my mother was there and she said, nothing doing, you're going to stay in here. <laughs> so he stayed. And the uh, doctor went home because when he came, he scared it out of his own. Now, uh, which doctor was that? Was Dr. That... Mercer. Uh, Dr. Mercer? Senior, yeah. Uh -huh. Dr. Mercer. And everything went fine, he had no problem, except the court was around three times, you know. Quarters three times around my neck. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Mercer wasn't even there, was he? No. How long did he wait? Was he Not there? too long. He took a nap all the time he was there. And he jumped up and walked out the door. He didn't look at me. Was, uh, did, was he sitting there or something? I or? was standing, you know. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and when he went out, I thought, good, now you're gone. And I got down to business. I don't know why it's like that. But he didn't make it back in time. So. No, he didn't make it back in time. Dad so. took over. And they say the cord is three times around my neck. Uh, mm -hmm. There were a couple other boys had cords. Yeah, the other ones did too. That were John and you and Clarence and Bobby. And Bobby, the last four. Uh huh. I don't know why, but did, me, what, I guess. Was everybody born at home? Uh, all, but, all but Clarence, you know. Clarence wasn't born. Why was he not born at home? Because there was no doctor to come to the house, you know. Uh -huh. So I had to go in. Except for Gilliam, Dr. Gilliam, I guess it was. Wasn't it? Yeah, so Clarence was the only one that was born in the hospital. It was okay, but it was better at home, to have it at home. Yes, that's okay. There wasn't a doctor. Uh, there wasn't a doctor to come out. Mm -hmm. No, but a doctor and nurse came to the house from yeah. from Smyrna. So, well, I can remember when Bobby was That was, was born. Bobby's. Yeah. That was Bobby. Doctor and nurse came to the house from Smyrna. Bobby Dr. Born. Gilliam, yeah. I remember I Danny and I and the kids were out all night in the chicken house. Yes, I know. They had well, the fresh uh, sawdust in it. Uh-huh. And you were reading papers, papers that were scattered around. Yeah. Uh huh. I should have put down maybe about Lawrence. He was our oldest one, you know. He liked to roam. He was a Roman boy. <laughs> and he had the whole neighborhood out looking for him. He was just two and a half years old. Uh huh. No, not that old. Baby, uh, Danny was just a young baby, little baby. He's still only a little more than a year older than Danny. Uh huh. No, two years because there was a baby in between. In between. Died, uh huh. Died. Yes, he was. Uh, he was a little more than two years old. Uh huh. And he walked to Burton Station with three of his toys, dragging a little wagon, a truck, and a little cart. Three together. And he pulled them to Pearson's Corner. He helped from the wet farm. Whole neighborhood out because ditches were full of water and you could have drowned, you know. And this was really some time. I couldn't go and help because I had the baby home. And they finally found him in Pearson's Corner. Some men gathered around. He said, Fanny, 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 you want to go to Fanny? Fanny. Like, <laughs> he would have he made it. He hadn't stopped it. Is it how, how far away did she live? Um, a couple miles on the couple other side, Pierce, on the other uh -huh. side of Pearson's Corner. He would have made it. He had stopped him. Didn't Dad tie him to a tree one time? Yeah, yes, he did, because he was just walking off all the time. <laughs> How long was that last? Did he? Well, I don't know. <laughs> he was really... He had some character. <laughs> Everybody at home. And he was some mischievous. You know, he'd break eggs and anything. We had to nail down the chicken house door so you couldn't get in. And, and uh, pretty soon everybody in church knew him. Well, wasn't he after Danny a lot? Yes, he was after Danny a lot, you know. Him and Danny never could hitch too much because they were different characters. Danny was slow and easy going, you know, and he was the fast one. <laughs> uh, now, uh, tell me a little bit more about your uh, moving to up to Hartley. Well, that was in 47, I guess. How did Dad uh, buy the farm? I mean, uh, how did well, he see, get... Well, see, we moved. Moved down to Greenwood, we're two years in Greenwood, where you started yeah. to school. Yeah. 
How did he get? How did he get to the farm? I mean, well, how? that was around the, near the neighborhood. You know, he went up there, well, the neighborhood to look for one. Uh huh. And although uh, we had looked at two farms, the other one was the other side of Hardly, mm -hmm. towards uh, Church Hill, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that was a nice farm, beautiful house and buildings were just top rate and everything. But Dad looked at the land; he didn't look at the buildings. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. I mean, the buildings were worse on the farm we lived in, lived at. Huh? Or the buildings were real good at that farm. Yeah, but but ours they weren't. Oh, the others were you no know, great yeah. difference. But Dad just looked at the land. He didn't look at the scoop around and trying to cover it up <laughs> all the time. Just about. Put it away for. Okay, now Dad uh, bought the farm for how much? Nine thousand dollars from the Grafton Heathers in Hartley. Not Hartley, mm -hmm. yeah, Hartley. Yeah. How much did he pay down on it? Hmm, I don't remember anymore. It wasn't about a couple thousand, I believe. Uh huh. He had made some money, you know, at Eli Miller's sawmill there. He worked with Eli Miller. Yes, huh? and he paid down a couple of thousand. But well, then he had to get some more money, you know, for cows and machinery. A lot of stuff he didn't have. That way, it went up a little more. Uh huh. Uh, so uh, we lived that now. Uh, how? Why did he decide to go into mill lumber? Well, he just got from, got away from it. You know, he he worked on at a mill even before we were married. Oh, did he? Oh, at yeah. a sawmill. Yeah, so he, a sawmill. And after you were married from the way place, during the winter he worked at the mill. Eli Miller, Eli Miller up there had a sawmill. Uh -huh. And then he and Adam had a sawmill. And, you know, uh -huh. pretty soon he learned how to saw, you know, and he'd do it all. He could saw fast, you know, like, uh -huh. you know, so yeah. that's what we had. So we weren't out the farm very long until he went in the sawmill about right away. And then we had two cows, and we had too much milk for me, you know, to make butter. He said, why don't you start sending the milk? He said, okay, I think I will. Got him started, so pretty soon he got another cow. That's what he started. I see, out. so actually he started the sawmill and then just got into the dairy. Yeah, it? just gradually. Because uh -huh. uh, we had, what, about 30 cows? Something like that, this, uh, all together. Uh, tell me a little bit about the last days you remember before Dad. Uh, he was working right up about till the day he got sick, wasn't he? Yes, yeah, when he was moving this building here for Frank Ludwig. Uh -huh. Two days he moved that building. They really worked hard. I remember that he'd come home, but he jumped right to the chores and on the chores. And that Wednesday night, you know, and then he went to prayer, prayer meeting. meeting. And from there he took sick, drove it out the wrong direction. You know, instead of going home, drove around about it. We still uh -huh. don't know why he did that. You know. But a cop stopped, didn't it? And yes, he, was in he the drove. Ditch or something? He drove across the road to the left side of the road into a shallow ditch. Uh huh. You know, and. And a cop came out and asked him, he was drunk, and he said, no, I don't drink. He said, no, I don't drink. Then he, uh, then the cop said, well, I'll help, have to help you out of the car. Dad said, something happened to me, I can't feel the steering wheel no more. So the cop helped him out of the car, and then he said he had to throw up, and he came out of the car. Then he laid him there on the grass, and Dad began to talk to him, told him he's got a son that's a doctor, he weren't quite a doctor yet. <laughs> and a uh, girl that's a nurse, and you know, all that. So, about his family. And the cop thought he wasn't very bad. You know, and he called uh -huh. called me. About 11 o'clock, he called me and said that uh, your husband had a stroke and he's in the hospital, but he's okay. He's coming along all right. But of course, he wasn't. He was, and he was he breathing very heavy and loudly, you know. And that's the way it was until until he died. But he seemed to sometimes come around a little bit when you talk to him. He'd say, huh, you know. He'd say, Clarence, he'd say, huh. But he kept right on with his uh, hard breathing. Well, uh, was he unconscious when you got to the hospital? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. His eyes were very deeply set, you know, he was very uh -huh. deep, seemed to be deeply unconscious. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And how long did he live then after that? Two days? Almost two days, not quite. Uh-huh. He died earlier in the evening. Uh-huh. Because I think I came home from Indiana, I was away at Indiana, came home the same day he died. Yes, I guess he did. How long after that did you still have the farm? You sold the cows pretty soon after that, didn't you? Yes, because everybody was going to school, you know. Yeah. And we had nobody, and Joe Spiker, you know, milked the cows, and they broke off and milked like everybody. Oh, is that right? Oh, did Joe, yes. did Joe milk them for a while? He milked them for the time after, you know, after the funeral. At that that time, till Clarence got back to him, Clarence, at which he had just gone on with some milking. He had broke off terribly because he hadn't handled the cows right. You know, he was very. Uh -huh. He had the boys in there, and he hadn't handled them right. You know. Uh huh. So the young had the cows for what a month or so afterward, or no? Two the next uh, the next Friday, they went to the Carol sale. Oh, is that All right? except four cows, and we sold them private too. The four uh -huh. best cows sold them private too. Another man. And then what about the farm sale? 
How long after that was that fall? Was it? Yes, German that truck? fall. Yes, that fall. You know, right after my surgery, I had, and I wasn't able yet to do much. Uh huh. Yeah. So, and when did you move off the farm? Uh, how long after was the next oh, year? About uh, New Year's, I guess. Lily was home, you know, and she said, I can't stand this cold house. We're getting out of here. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> then I you moved to the trailer. This, yeah, and then yeah. we got this little trailer and moved down to Hermitage. Well, there that summer. Now, it was one time you almost drowned. Where was that at? Oh, at Morris Lake, yeah. Uh -huh. Young folks, you know, went down out for Ascension Day and they had a boat. Just went boating. We weren't fishing, just boating. Uh huh. And uh, I was accustomed to a boat, and I said, I, I'll go along. And I sat in this little peak, you know, just a little peak, and I put my hand down the water, deep water. Then when we came back, then Mary, my cousin, said that uh, she thinks she'll go. And I said, okay, I was going to get off. Uh -huh. I think I was off. I was off the boat. I said, I'll, I'll go with you if you want to go. So uh, I got in the boat, and I got in the boat, it, it uh, got away from the bank. Then she came, and I tried to hold it. Uh -huh. She came down with her feet. When she got in, then it really got away from the bank, you know. And we just had to hold on to the... Well, before we knew it, we were down in the water. That's and as we went out, the boat just shot back out, and you couldn't, couldn't get the boat back. Out there, and you know? how'd they get you out, then? Well, uh, there was somebody that was sitting not too far from on the bank, you know, not too uh -huh. far, and uh -huh. saw something was coming, happening. So they come running and got a hold of our hands. Uh -huh. There was one, one person there, and he got a hold of one, my, one of my hands, one of Mary's. Uh -huh. Gotcha. And then they called for help, and uh, then they pulled us out. And then we had to run, you know, to get our clothes clean, uh, dry. The boys took off one area, and we won the other area. We just took our dresses off, and then we had... Yeah, added everything. Then we